Review time. This is the Philips Slim Style Bulb. Now I reviewed the 60 watt equivalency quite some time ago. This is a new one, 75 watts. Has the same funny shape though, or it's kind of flat. I guess obviously that's where it gets its name, Slim Style. As always, uh, we will tear it apart and we'll analyze its performance. Okay, uh, just taking the plastic shell off exposes the two circuit boards. Just like the Slim 60, there is a board here which holds the emitters and there's another circuit board which holds the power supply. Now the whole theme of the circuit board in construction is uh, cheap. Uh, so I must admit I'm quite surprised why they don't actually do this as a single circuit board and they go through the step of having to manually solder on the emitter. If you look down here, you can see uh, a surprise. There's actually four wires. Two wires, of course, for the power supply leads which power up the LEDs. These two here actually are marked as if there is a thermistor or some sort of temperature compensation device. And if you zoom into the back here, there's a little device here which gets wired down to here. And it looks like it's monitoring the temperature of the emitter array. So I'm not sure if it uh, turns down the intensity if the bulb's getting too hot for a life cycle uh, effect or something. But um, that does seem quite innovative. Uh, let's uh, zoom into the power section now and uh, take a closer look of it. Okay, well here's the power section, uh, obviously the yellow bit's a transformer. If you were to peek in here, you'd see some uh, conducted emission filtering to prevent the bulb from creating uh, interference on the power lines. Uh, the other side, there's the uh, large smoothing capacitor here, rated to about 130 degrees. And uh, let's look into some of the workmanship. Uh, it's a bit disturbing on this capacitor. I'll just uh, zoom in the inset picture here. Uh, what we're looking at is the lead coming through the board and what you can see is that there's no solder on one side of the board it's only soldered on the other side um, and that actually it will create a very easily a fractured solder joint so uh, kind of points towards whether or not this bulb would have much of a life uh, obviously they weren't very confident with it because they put a pretty slow uh, pretty small warranty on the bulb itself but uh, otherwise the topology seems fairly similar to uh, other bulbs so if you were to look at my 60 watt review of this bulb, uh, you'd see that I wasn't too impressed with it. Um, I'm afraid we're not off to a good start with this bulb either. It has the same very poor warranty. Um, there's a whole class of Philips bulbs which have quite superior warranties compared to this. Uh, it's only uh, three hours per day, seven days per week uh, for three years. Okay, so this bulb's 1100 lumens. Uh, right next to it's an older Philips bulb built to a much higher standard, also rated at 1100 lumens. I think it'll be good to compare and contrast between these two bulbs and how they perform and how they differ. Thermal testing. Here's the uh, Philips Slim Style bulb, and over here I have my iPhone with a Seek thermal camera. Let me just insert the thermograph of what the camera's seeing. And uh, it's sort of seeing that the very top of the bulb is where it's the hottest, and uh, about 70 degrees Celsius. Uh, let me look at the other bulb here. This is the, uh, the older Philips uh, bulb, uh, so-called Alien Head. Let me insert its thermograph. And what we can see, of course, is the uh, heat profile is quite different, but more importantly, the maximum temperature uh, is considerably less than what's on the slim style bulb. And I wonder if that's translating to a, the warranty differences because this bulb here, uh, because of its nature of construction, which was more expensive, has better thermal performance. So one challenge with this lightweight construction, it's true also the 60 watt light bulb, it, uh, it actually buzzes. Now the 75 watt bulb, at least the one I received, seems to have less buzzing than the 60. But if I put the microphone close to it and amplify a bit, you'll hear this buzzing sound. So this is the 60 watt slim style. Uh, it also buzzes. In fact, this particular bulb buzzes much worse than the 75. I don't know if uh, that's just because of luck of the draw or if they've actually did improve the 75. But again, we'll zoom in and listen to it. So one of the challenges with uh, the slim style is it has this uh, black stripe, basically. I presume it's an artifact of how the bulb is constructed. You can see as it moves along the wall here, there's a darker area. And of course, that's not really a, a desirable attribute of a light bulb. So here's the 75-watt uh, equivalency, and here's the 60-watt uh, version. You can see the uh, physical size is quite a bit larger. Uh, this distance uh, has grown quite considerably. Um, and then if you can contrast it to the older 75 watt bulb, um, it's quite a bit uh, larger diameter. Um, and that means probably for some light fixtures the bulb won't fit. Now, the bulb's not qualified for what is known as an enclosed light fixture, but I suspect people might try to use it. 
And one thing you got to be aware of is the bulb is just simply so physically large uh, it wouldn't uh, fit through some envelopes. So yet, of course, the older one has uh, no troubles. So in terms of flicker, we have a light bulb here shining upon a solar cell, and of course there's the output from the oscilloscope showing the classic 120 hertz pattern. So uh, just like its 60 watt uh, counterpart, it uh, has flicker on it, and uh, when you tune, tune it downwards in terms of intensity, you can see the flicker, of course, uh, actually increases. Uh, that's uh, consistent with the other Slim style, and of course the older uh, alien head bulb had no flicker whatsoever. So I guess this is one of the compromises as they cost reduce the bulb, uh, you end up with some flicker on it. Okay, obviously the uh, bulb cover has been removed, just a couple pieces of plastic and exposes the uh, two elements of the bulb power supply on this circuit board here. And then for whatever reason they decide to put a second circuit board on which holds the emitter. This is heavily plated and of course it's what's acting like a heat sink. Uh, as before, uh, I'll put my Seek thermal camera onto it and uh, we'll inset the film here. And I'll speed it up, uh, but uh, when you turn the bulb on, um, what you'll see, of course, is the heat building up on the emitters. That's the hottest part of the bulb, and then, of course, slowly growing into the uh, the rest of this circuit board. And then, of course, that heat gets rejected to the environment, um, and that's, of course, the main thermal management of this bulb. All right, well, that's the uh, Philips SimStyle 75 uh, watt equivalency bulb. It has similar problems to the 60 watt. Obviously, the flickers there, the short warranty, the very high thermal profile. Uh, poor soldering connection down here. Everything pointing to this being a fairly modest bulb. Uh, on the other side, of course, it's uh, cost reduced uh, for a low sell price and um, discouragingly the market seems to prefer a low initial cost versus a uh, high service life, uh, which is problematic because there's only finite resources on this planet and uh, these emitters should last uh, decades of taking care of and uh, this assembly is probably not going to allow that to occur.